Hey everyone, Miranda Patrone here with you, and I think we're going to do something a little different today, um, as opposed to just a mandala stone or circular pattern. We're going to tuck a mandala into a whale um, design. Now I did this one a little bit ago, and a lot of you asked if I could do a tutorial on it for a video, and so I in all honesty, I wasn't going to, but then I varnished it and something happened <laughs> and it damaged um, the original that I created. So I would going, was going to do it again anyway. So my loss, your gain. And uh, to be honest, it was really fun to paint. So I'm looking forward to doing, doing it again. So you can see here the varnish on the head of the whale just... I don't know what happened, some sort of chemical reaction with the, the paint that I was using or the fact that maybe my studio is in the basement now, something happened and it just ate away at it. Um, quite frankly, the kids get down here now too, so who knows what ended up with this, but we are going to redo a little guy like this today for our painting. And this one I just sketched out um, an outline. But I actually am pretty excited. I found some stencils online of a whale. Um, and I'm going to use the stencil today to show you how you can use the stencil and tuck a mandala into the stencil outline. So I have this canvas board here. And this is the stencil on top. The white is the stencil. And they're just little cardboard stencils. Um, so they're not very expensive. And I just painted my canvas board with a matte black from DecoArt. So this is a 4 by 6 canvas board. Just so you know the approximate size of the design we'll be doing today. And for painting today, a lot of you have, I did a poll, and a lot of you voted, a lot of you <laughs> voted that you'd prefer I use the dotting tools when doing the videos. So I will use the dotting tools for the video today. <clears throat> I'll also post a link to where you can find these stencils on Amazon. And so this cute little wheel is going to be fun. We're going to create a fun little mandala design in his outline. All right, so these are the dotting tools that I'll be using, like a nail dotting stylus with a ball on the end. And I have one of these that I actually broke the back off of, the end off of, that I call my etcher, and I will be using that to trace the stencil here. It's just so that I can not have all the problems that come along with trying to erase pencil or chalk and whatnot. I don't have to deal with that. So this will just kind of etch it into the black matte paint that I have put on the canvas board. And so I'll just trace the stencil with that and then afterwards I can just take it off with a little bit of water. I think I'll draw on the spout here, but I don't know that I'm going to use it, just so we have it for space-wise, but I don't think I'm going to use it. I think I'll do swipes for the water spout out of the blowhole on the whale. So this way too, I just have a rough outline of where to stay in the lines with the mandala design. And there you go. So you can see, it's just I etched it on to the dark paint. It made it kind of like a wet white, lighter color. And then with water, I can just erase it. And then I don't have all the marks and rubber marks. And you just have to be careful not to push too hard on your canvas. It works really well in stone. But that way, it just comes right off. And then there's no erasure marks or rubber from the eraser, um, pieces of chalk, whatever you use. Um, but that's just personal preference. So you can see on here, I just varnished over it. Actually, I didn't even bother getting rid of the lines with the water. 
and the varnish just had it just the lines disappeared with the varnish. All right, so we have our little wheel here, and you could just kind of freehand it if you wanted, or what I'd like to do to kind of help us along the way will be to use a compass. And that way it can kind of write in the lines of where you want to put the mandala. It gives you a little bit of a guide. So you could just freehand the arches in here, but we'll use a compass and that way you can kind of create the guidelines that will help you stay sym symmetrical for your mandala. So I just put my etcher in my compass. And you could use pencil, we would have painted over the lines anyway basically, but I'm going to try it here using my etcher. And I want this one to be kind of large for a half circle just to start off because I like the larger mandala and I'm just gonna gently trace it's giving me a little problem here gently trace it make sure it's in there It may have been better if I just used my pencil. But anyway, you get the idea here. And then I'll just kick the compass out a little bit to do the next row, the next line, and the next line, and the next line. And then you have some guidelines in there for your mandala. So I'm going about a quarter of an inch. And you can vary it up in size and depth depending on how big you want your rows to go around here. But this way too, when you get into the sections like up by the tail, um, you can continue the mandala design if you prefer, but also like right now, you know, I'm starting to hit the end of the whale here. And this way it'll bring it back down like the mandala had continued the whole way. But obviously I'm not going to go outside the lines of the whale because we want the design to stay within the confines of the stencil design. squeeze one more in up here just in case I don't know if we'll use it but we might and now you're just on the tail it's not going to be hitting anywhere else basically on the design so I can just stay over here by the tail and just in case I might fill it in with just blues and haphazard dots as opposed to um, filling it in with the bandala, but I'll decide when we get there what I want to do. Like this one I filled in just with all the dots, but I don't know if I like the thick swipes around the tail. It does give it a different look and a nice outline, but you know, that way I tie it in with having the swipes, but it just depends on what you feel like you want to do when you get there. So I'm th thinking that I would do the swipes in here without using the actual spout, but again, I'll decide whether or not I want to do that when we get to that point. But these are always things I debate, so first we're going to start right down at the bottom with that first half circle that we made with some snow white, it's titanium white, and the Decor Americana. And I'm going to show you using the dotting tools and only the dotting tools. You don't have to use brushes for this one at all. 
And the thing about this is t that's nice too is with the dotting tools, you don't have brush marks. So if you're not used to using a brush, um, sometimes that gets a little frustrating for people as they have brush lines when you're doing the larger sections, like a big circle like this. So this way you can just fill in the semicircle, not have the brush lines, but you're basically kind of painting with the dotting tool. So I get a good amount on one of the larger size styluses, and we don't have to keep coming back, but you're basically just going to paint in a semicircle here for your first dot. And I use a pretty good amount because you don't want it getting sparse in any of the areas. And then just be careful when you get up to the edge here, but just kind of create your semicircle. You could always switch it to one of the smaller size tools, but I'm just going to push it around here into its half circle shape. I'd like to mix it up between a couple turquoisey blues and greens and see how this mandala goes with that. So first off I have Shoreline and these are all Decor Americanas. I'm going to use the smaller end and usually you know you do your plus sign but you don't have your full mandala center circle here so this time I'm just going to go up towards the middle and you could draw a guideline for your metal but then I'm just going to go to the end of the whale on the sides of each of these and then space it accordingly after that. We just went halfway in between the two dots that we did. You could also fill it in afterwards if you want to continue the shoreline, do the same size, but I'm going to go with a bigger dot to fit in here, probably. But you could just fill it in to do one ring around and space them accordingly. Just space them in between the ones you just put down if you wanted to do a, a full ring. So I'm going to go with Bahama Blue now. We're going to get a little bit bigger, so probably the two millimeter dotting tool just to be a little bit larger and tuck it in here.
and I'll just tuck some little white in between all of those to kind of even out that layer. Some desert turquoise next. Now this one, I don't know if you can see it through the camera, but I didn't shake it up quite enough. I'm going over each of the white dots, but you can see on the canvas, it's kind of pulling them into non-dot shapes because I didn't shake it quite well enough. So that's just a little tip. If your paint is too fluid, you will have that issue where they don't pull into dots per correctly either, especially on canvas because you kind of have the little grid lines on canvas. I'm just gonna, you can just kind of push it around, but I'm gonna actually let it dry thoroughly before I start messing with it, or painting around it rather. I'm just letting these ones dry while I pick out other paints and decide what I can do. So you, I could just kind of plan the design too. If you want to go bigger, you could do full rings. Um, just kind of thinking on how I want the design to flow out. There's so many different things you can do with that. All right, Bahama blue, I think. And these have dried pretty thoroughly now, so there's no danger of them bleeding into one another. I'm just gonna do little dots of Bahama blue in between those.
All right, so I'm going with a bit larger and I'm going with the metallic peacock pearl. And we're just gonna kind of push it around into a circle because the size of this tool doesn't really give me the size dot that I wanted. So once I get the paint on there, I just kind of push it around to the size that I want for that dot. And these men or these metallics are just amazing. I love the metallics. And I'll list a, a, a list of all the paints that I use, the colors that I used as well in the description. How are you guys doing up to this point? Okay, I hope you're doing all right. It's a fun little design and hopefully it'll inspire you for other ideas too. All right, so Mermaid Tail is the next paint. I'm gonna do a couple of rings of Mermaid Tail, I think, around each of the peacock ones that we just did, just to kind of fill in that space with a similar color. And my little guy in the background. <laughs> Alright, so we're just gonna keep going around these with the desert turquoise and then don't <laughs> worry if it doesn't fit all the way down in on the next round. I just kind of wanted to bulk up this row of color. And this one's not far off from the peacock pearl that we used. So this is the other ring, and you can see when I'm not going to be able to go down in between.
All right, so now I'm just thinking I'll probably do this ocean blue since it's a little bit of contrast to the ones that have so much green in them. And we'll do a round of the progressive size dots around that again with this ocean blue. You can see the little, it brightens it up a little bit too, because you're heading with like the lighter blue. And this will help us transition into a few more blue colors for the rest of the top of the whale. I'll do some of the silver, I think, and do a little tiny dot of silver in between where each of those meet. All right, so I'm going with the Ice Blue Dazzling Metallic with one of the larger dotting tools. And it does get a little bit tricky at this point on the mandala because we're gonna start getting out to the outer edge of our whale stencil, which is gonna make it a little more dicey just tucking in the colors where they would be had the mandala gone without being cut off by the stencil design. So if you were going the whole way, if this was just a full page mandala, then you would have a full dot here, but we don't have a full section because we have our little buddy's back here. So I'm just gonna curve it along his back like it would just be the rounded part of the dot at the bottom. And then same over here, we have a little bit more space, but this one's gonna be kind of like a three quarter dot, I guess. So you're just kind of painting it into that portion of a circle. And then this one, I'll probably only get a half over it here. Like that. And 
So if we were to just take a punch cut of a whale out of this, this would be the type of design we'd get, you know, if we had a full mandala and then did like a cookie cutter. So here's the true blue. And I'm gonna try to keep it darker up to the top, but I wanna bring the blue down in here so that we're not having kind of blocked off colors where it's the greenish teal colors, then blue. So this'll, if we put some blue dots down in the inner part of the mandala, it'll kind of make the colors more cohesive and blend in to the mandala as a whole. So we'll just stick some blue down in here, that true blue. And this is just the one millimeter dotting tool. And then just like we brought the blue down here, I'm going to bring some greenish ones out here. So I'll use the shoreline again. And I feel like that just makes it a more cohesive piece when you have the colors kind of infiltrating throughout the entire mandala, then it's more connected. Does that make sense? And there's certainly a time and place if you want a more blocky type where you have it each color section cordoned off, you can do that as well. It just depends on the style that you want to go for for your mandala. But for this one, I kind of want to have the colors flow blue to green, blue to green, green to blue, back and forth. I'm just going around each one of these ice blue with the small one, the smallest dotting tool. Not the edger, but just a small one. And you're just letting the paint run off the tool as you go. You don't have to switch to smaller tools. You just start with the big dot at the top and then work your way around the dot to the bottom. And they get progressively smaller. And so in the other first sections, you know, you've got to let the paint drip off a little or you can tap it on the palette and then you'll, you'll be down to a smaller dot so that over in the back of the whale there you could have the smaller dots fit in where they come down here and you just don't have the full mandala there. thing too is you have the whole back of the whale and you have you know lots of angles with this so don't feel bad it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be exactly 12 dots around or exactly 10 or you know you're gonna be tucking some in here and there and some have to get a little crowded just because the spacing is difficult when you're trying to put it in inside of another shape is difficult I'll admit I'm used to be a little more type A and stressed out when things didn't look perfect or organized and that's one of the things that this has taught me is really having patience and we'll go back to that ocean blue here and just put some of that ocean blue around I'm going to drop some off up here at the top because I might have too much on it and then I'm going to work it to the smaller dots. And then up here. And then I'm down to small so I'm going to grab a couple over here because I'm already down to a point where I have less paint on the tip and then I can start off with the smaller ones down here as opposed to one big glob and the dots too big. 
But if you don't do it on your piece, you can also just drop it off on another piece of paper, or like I said, the palette. But I'll just tuck a couple in here. That's one of the things with the paintbrush is you can push down hard or light too to help mitigate the size of your dots. I'm just going to go to the edge here, so that's the front. Now I'm just debating what I want to do next, if I want to go darker or the same. I think I'll do the same and just do another ring around. of that ocean blue. I'm just going to touch these up a little bit here. All right, so I'm debating. I want to keep it blue up here. And I still have a little bit of space at the top of the head, but I also don't want it to just blend all in too much. Plus I didn't, I'll do light now and then I'll do darker blue after it so that when we do our spout this light part won't kind of blend into the spout because I'm going to do that in white and I'll do swipes, I probably won't be using the one that came with a stencil here but I would like to fill that in with darker so I'll do light here to kind of offset the dark here and then when we do the spout it'll be dark against the spout So that's kind of the thought process I go through as I do it. It's just debating what will look good in what area and not always a full out plan.
this is the baby blue that I'm just tucking in and there's no room for it down here. So I'm gonna just kind of cut it in here at the end of this side. I'm going to bring some of this down into the turquoise area just so we have a little more blue probably down in there. The tropical blue. Or maybe I'll just do it up at the top. We'll see. So I'm just gonna probably follow the same line that we've been following here for our mandala this last row I'm just tucking it into what leftover space I have I'll probably just fill it with this color And then of course as we follow down to here, this is where it would be, so I'm just going to continue on the V. Here I just filled in the whole end of the tail. I think that's what I'm going to do with this one. Let's just fill in the end of the tail with sporadic dots as opposed to the mandala shape. But I think I'm going to continue the V just out a little bit until we get to the fattest end of the tail. We'll just do some smaller ones here to fill it in at the end. And then we'll do the next color here too, just filling it in. The same with the um, the same blue that we were using. I'm just debating if I want to continue the V or what color I want to do next on the tail here because we're only in the tail. Everything else is all set. I'll probably just... I'll grab that blue we used here, that ocean blue. Do a couple here. Just to kind of push the tail out a little bit further with the design. Alright, now I'm just debating 
I'm just going to outline. I don't want to do the swipes, I think, for the tail. They were big and fat. And it was fun, but I think I want to do just an outline of the tail, and then we'll fill it in with the other blues. So I'm using the metallic ice blue and I'm going to outline it with the metallic. It's a little bit more of a dainty look to go around as opposed to the big fat swipes, but those are fun too. This is looking really nice. A nice little beaded metallic look against the black. Are you guys enjoying yours? I hope it's going well. Some of the fun too about this is you're less inhibited just kind of doing the haphazard dots in the big part. And I'm just going to erase that spout because I'm going to not use it. So while the tail is drying, we'll use the white, titanium white, the snow white. And just want to kind of get a good amount on a large dotting tool because we're going to probably have a long swipe to do here for our first swipe. I'm just kind of etching on here about where I want the blow hole to be, the spout to come out. But I'm going to use the bigger end to dip it in the white because it'll drag longer and give you a nice big thick spout of water to come out the top. So I'm just going to slowly take your time dragging it so that See, it didn't go as far as I wanted it, so I can just reach back up and grab from the end and pull it back down a little more. Just get it pretty close to the top of the whale's head. And this one, of course, we're going to arch it from the side and bring it back into the same area. Just take your time. And so you want them all to kind of converge in the same zone of where the blowhole would be. And I'm just going to do three big ones like this. And then I'll flip it around and use the smaller end and pick up a little less paint. And we'll tuck some little ones up in here on either side just to kind of round out the design of the water coming out. like that. I'm 
All right, so now I'm just gonna pick a couple of blues that I want to use in the tail to kind of finish this little guy off. I'm gonna go back to that tropical blue. I really enjoy this color. And this is fun too, like I was saying, it's more the haphazard, just kind of toss it around. I like the fatter ones towards the center. It's just my own personal preference because then when you get to the outer edge, I like it to just look a little more delicate when you get the small ones out towards the edge, if that makes sense. Plus it's kind of freeing, you know, just dot around. It's more like pointillism used to be where you're just dotting for the picture to make the picture. So I'm not too, too worried. I'm just going to bring that over a little bit here, but I'm not too worried about being haphazard in the tail then because you have the blend of your colors that way. So if they're still wet and they do run a little into each other, it's not the end of the world because that's just the way that I'm dotting into the tail. I think what I'll do is some of the shiny peacock pearl to kind of bring that up into the tail as well and that will tie that metallic in and the greens a little to the tail as well so we don't have that black color like I was talking about earlier. Plus it gives a little bit of highlight because it has the shimmery effect and it's a little bit lighter tone of a color. And then you're going to have this sweet little whale. On the other one, I did a background where it was just the bluish green background, but I think on this one, after the video, I'll do some sort of sunset dotting, or maybe I'll just leave it blank. It'll, it'll depend, but I like the bold colors of the yellows and pinks to offset the blues. I think that'll look nice. All right, so looking at the video too here, I can see spaces that I miss. So sometimes that helps too. If you just take a quick picture with your phone, you can see spots that you missed. I don't know why. For me, it just helps me to see when it's on a different um, plane. Or sometimes I'll walk away and come back, back to the piece to just kind of take another look at it before I varnish. So I hope you've enjoyed doing this little guy. If you are looking for more of my art, I'm on Instagram, and you can see that more on Instagram. Um, Facebook is more interactive if you're looking to chat or see events or anything like that. So I'm on Facebook as well, Miranda Patron Art. And then, as always, I have my art in my Etsy shop if you are interested. And I am still selling the angled tools for those of you who are looking for them. I'm just going to check here one more time to make sure I haven't missed any spots that look bare. There's one there. You don't see it when you're up close and personal with your piece as much. <laughs> so there is our whale. I can't fit them both in the view here, but you can see the background on this other one, how it was the blues and greens behind it. So maybe sunset colors would, would do this little guy good. See the blues and greens just went from like a dark to light at the top.
Alright, well, I hope you all enjoyed doing this with me, and I am looking forward to doing more videos. If you're new, you can always subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications when I put out new videos. So, I hope you all enjoyed this lovely little whale with our stencil. So now, I'll wait for him to dry and then just erase the lines from with some damp water here. And just go around and erase whatever lines are showing, especially if you're not going to do a background. And there he is. I hope you all have a great day.